Well, as the Biden administration continues to pour money and resources into Ukraine, more U.S. leaders are sounding the alarm about a bigger issue, China. So let's go off the wall. Let's find out how much the U.S. is investing in Ukraine and how that might be hurting our preparation for a potential war against China. We'll start with this, the latest news uh, when it comes to the United States and Ukraine, Pete, and that is that we will be sending something like 31 tanks, Abrams tanks, to Ukraine. It's a beautiful, uh, a, a beautiful machine. I mean, it can go 42 miles an hour, but it requires... It, it, to go one mile in an Abrams tank mm -hmm. takes two gallons of gas. So the logistics behind an Abrams are massive. Uh, and that's the concern. You're sending 31 of them. You have to be well-trained to use them. They're very complicated. They require It's a jet engine that pushes it. Uh, so, yes, the, the capabilities are wonderful. Uh, but the question is, are 31 enough to make a difference? That's what I was going to ask you. How big of an impact would this have, does this have in Ukraine? This was, this was meant to be top cover for European countries to provide their own tanks to Ukraine. Russia is saying it looks like an offensive capability, which it oftentimes is. This could be an, a potentially a escalation in the eyes of Putin, but not a game changer on the ground, especially because most of these won't get there for a year because of how long it takes to procure them get them there, train them on using the weapons. Oh, that seems incredibly important to me. How long it takes to procure them and transport them with one year lead time on one piece of military equipment. So let's play this out into the bigger story here. We've now dedicated $42 billion of American money, your money, American taxpayer money, to the efforts in Ukraine. That's both humanitarian, economic, and military aid. And the Abrams tanks, Pete, one part of the larger story of what we've dedicated to. More lethality from an Abrams tank, but we're already talking about helicopters, APCs, 300 of them. This is what we wrote in in Iraq and Afghanistan, oftentimes MRAPs. Um, we left a lot of them behind in Afghanistan, so these are the ones that we didn't leave behind. Uh, Stinger missiles have been significant in, in slowing down the ability for Putin's army to advance, as well as Javelin anti-armor systems. A, one, one of these can, can take out a tank of, of the Russians. That's what makes this a game changer of the, the smaller against the big. Here's why I thought it was important that you pointed out a year lead time on an Abram tank. Okay, so I think we both believe the United States has a vast, vast ability to produce war-making equipment. The question is one of focus and dedication. Where do we focus it? So yeah. there's at least one United States Senator, J.D. Vance of Ohio, who's saying we're, we're focused in the wrong direction. Watch this. We have spent so much of our munitions down, so much of our military-grade equipment down, that if we have to fight a war against China, which I think is far more likely, and frankly, it's a far more dangerous opponent, that's what worries me, is that the, the focus on Russia comes at the expense of China. Pete comes at the expense he's, of China. He's exactly right. We have finite resources and finite ability to strategically orient. And that's why a, uh, a general at the Air Mobility Command, a top command in the Air Force, put out a memo to his command staff recently, which, which caught our eye, which is getting a lot of attention, and pointed out the fact that he hopes he's wrong, but his gut tells me we will fight, and he means the communist Chinese in 2025 because of elections in Taiwan in 2024, our own presidential uh, elections in 2024, the uncertainty around that, and the reality that China has been orienting its military to fight us. They're building a military capable of defeating the United States. We have a military that's been fighting in the Middle East for 20 years, and has, is now focused in Ukraine, uh, and they see that as an opportunity. Terrifying statement. Be ready by 2025. The Defense Department is saying that's not representative of the yeah, Defense shot Department's view on China. Oh, let's take it for a moment. Let's say J.D. Vance is right, that we're, we're distracted, we're, our focus is torn. We're not looking at the real threat in China. Well, what is it that we're, we're sized up against here when it comes to the U.S. versus China? A bit of a tale of the tape. It is a tale. I mean, our armed forces... What, it, this doesn't, these numbers don't say anything about capabilities, I and mean, that's an important part. You could throw a lot of, the next war we would have against China would not be a land war of them invading California or us being on the mainland of China. So, yes, those numbers are staggering, but they're not necessarily the strategic difference. Aircraft, pretty important. But, again, it's what type of aircraft? Fourth, fifth generation fighter fighter jets, they're trying to create those as well to match our capability. Look at ships, naval advantage for the Chinese. Now, this is a projection by 2025, and that's where we stand today. But to your point, they've been building 
a military designed for this confrontation. Yeah, what we don't have on this screen is hypersonic missiles. Donald Trump talking about that recently, by the way, and our need to be able to shoot them down. Because we have 10 aircraft carriers, and 10, and they have, I think, one in development. But if they have a hypersonic missile that can take out our aircraft carrier in the first hour of a conflict, then our ability to project power becomes very difficult. Look, if there is a, if, if there is a... Let's a, hope we don't a, go a, here. That's what I'm going to get at. If, if there's a fight disadvantage in any way, this, the terrifying thing is how you, you throw a haymaker. And look at the haymaker difference. So the question is, is this the United States' ultimate flex? Uh, it has been traditionally in peer-on-peer -peer conflicts. But two colonels for the Communist Chinese wrote a strategic piece in the late 90s called Unrestricted Warfare. They know they don't have the same military capabilities we do. So through technology, through cyber, uh, through cultural issues, everything, they see economic, they see other advantages to bring us to our knees. And that's what they would try to leverage. Really the virus. Quickly, this is this is total military spending in 2021. You know, the United States outspends China. I think the takeaway is the advantage isn't what one might imagine for the United States of America. When you talk to people currently serving, they're pretty cynical about our capabilities should China try to move on Taiwan. And if they do, we've said we would back up Taiwan. That's a lot of power projection for us, a lot of vulnerability, and could that spiral into a larger war that China thinks they have an advantage in? And then all the more important to say, to ask, to see, hey, where's our focus? Should it be on Ukraine? Should it be on China? Exactly right. Rachel.